everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take an up close and personal, in-depth look at the R53 generation 2005 Mini Cooper S 6-speed. And this particular Cooper is one of my personal cars that I bought with around 34,000 miles back at the end of 2013. And throughout this video, I'm going to take you through an in-depth review of the Cooper S. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, take it on a detailed test drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The exterior color is known as electric blue, and this particular Cooper features the upgraded gravity leather interior surfaces finished in panther black. Not to mention the optional anthracite interior package that features a black headliner and specific high gloss metallic gray trim across the dash as well as the doors. You gotta love that unique word, the supercharged four cylinder. The R53 Mini Cooper S features electro hydraulic rack and pinion power steering and a new for 2005 three spoke leather wrapped steering wheel. The older models had more perforated leather across the sides as well as a more classic two spoke design with their horn buttons located on either spoke. The leather is also pretty cool in the fact that while it stitches here, it wraps around and tucks in with the other portion across each spoke definitely giving it a little bit of a unique styling cue for the Mini. You also have heavy grips up top for a more sure footed feel satin silver accented across the spokes as well as the airbag cover and optional multifunction controls. Now I do like the electro hydraulic steering in the Mini. It's nice and precise and does exactly what you tell it to without a lot of lag or anything like that. It also transmits a bit of road feel to it so it keeps you engaged in the whole driving experience. As far as gearbox choices, the Cooper could be had with four different optional transmissions depending on which trim level you get. Base models that were not supercharged could either get a 5-speed manual or a continuously variable or CVT automatic transmission. The Cooper S could either be had with a standard 6-speed manual like you have here, or the optional 6-speed automatic with manual shiftability. Crisp, clean throws, all the way over, up is reverse, and a combination leather and chrome shift knob blend into a leather shift boot in the chrome housing. I mean, just take a listen to that unique supercharger whine. The gearbox is crisp, nice and smooth, and it's precise. A few other optional features this particular Mini has is the chrome interior as well as exterior kit, giving it a little bit more of a classic look. But one of my favorite things is the optional gauge pack. You can opt to move the center mounted speedometer next to the tachometer on the steering column as such. And in its place, you get a whole bunch of accessory gauges more than you would in the standard car. These include your vehicle temperature, fuel, oil temperature, and oil pressure. And so we're going to flip on the optional projector xenon headlamps, as well as the front fog lamps. Rear fog lamps are also available, and if equipped, will be located right there. Not to mention the hazards. 
both windows are automatic down. And we're gonna check out the exterior, shall we? The original Mini first debuted back in 1959 and has had an incredible following ever since. While it did come in a variety of body styles, the most well-known variants were the higher performing Cooper and Cooper S models. With beefed up suspensions, transmissions, brakes, larger engines and upgraded internals, it solidified the Mini's popularity in rally racing during the 1960s. The idea was simple and revolutionary to introduce a small, urban car that packs good interior space, an economical transverse mounted engine, space saving front wheel drive layout, and a price anyone could afford. The transverse i4 was a pretty new thing back in the day. Since then, virtually all i4s produced today follow a similar layout. When BMW Group acquired the Mini brand during the late 1990s, the goal was to reintroduce the nameplate to the general public with an all new, retro inspired vehicle. The car, offered in two variants, would be known as the Cooper and Cooper S. Mini would be brought up to Bavarian standards of precise engineering, but most important, it would stay true to its traditional style, function, and form, not to mention being great fun to drive. When the new Mini debuted, it was 2 feet longer, 11 inches wider, and 110 pounds heavier than its vintage brethren. Compared to a Honda Civic Coupe at the time, it's also shorter in length by just under 31 inches. It's been over 10 years since the original Mini made its big comeback in 2002. Ever since, Minis have shown up everywhere it seems. Their popularity of being small yet quirky automobiles is a testament to staying true to a classic formula but adapting it to a modern age. Over the years, Mini has experimented with a wide variety of models that includes performance with John Cooper Works to Minis for utility, family, and pure style. You can say that, as of now, Mini's been entering just about every segment while creating some of their own niche markets. The supercharged Cooper S models also receive a number of styling changes that enhance its racier feel. Larger wheels, S-branded chrome fender vents, twin chrome exhaust, and a larger domed hood with integrated scoop that holds channel air into the intercooler. It towers 1.6 inches over the standard Cooper's hood. That added bulge also helps fit nearly 85 pounds of extra engine hardware. The car rides nearly half an inch lower, and on hardtop models, the addition of a spoiler and chrome fuel cap. With the low, wide stance and short overhangs, it gives it a planted, hunkered-down look. Spring rates are also 10% stiffer with larger diameter stability bars. Packaging for the engine was also a challenge, being how small the engine compartment actually is. The supercharger is mounted in the upper front section of the engine, which is typically where the water pump is located on the standard car. For S models, the pump was relocated to behind the blower and is driven by one of the two rotor shafts of the supercharger. The cold air induction system then had to be relocated over the transmission, which is where the battery is located in the base cars. Therefore, S models actually have their battery located in the trunk. It takes a force of 24,500 newton meters of torque to flex the frame one degree. Thanks to the steel unibody, this means the Cooper is quite stiff. It makes for a great handling profile, but does sacrifice ride quality. It's quite stiff, but not punishing. Being that the Cooper is front-wheel drive, many engineered equal-length drive shafts in order to eliminate torque steer for both Cooper and Cooper S variants. It also uses a drive-by-wire throttle system to electronically transmit accelerator input for a faster, more consistent response on demand. Owning a Mini is about adapting it to your lifestyle, as they're one of the most customizable line of cars out there. Just about anything can have that personal touch from color combinations to interior fitment. Typically, a Mini can be had with either a white, black, or color matched roof. With the white or black tops, many people pair bonnet and boot stripes with the roof color to help complement like the ones I put on mine here. Mini also offers a variety of styles that or you can make your own. I decided to make my own and really enjoy how it came out. Chrome accessories are also available on demand from the factory for a classic look including carbon fiber parts parts such as the grill, deck lid, mirrors, and bonnet scoop. The panoramic roof is a must-have option, while you can also specify advanced options such as rain-sensing windshield wipers and navigation. For this Gen Cooper and Cooper S, there are six different wheel choices, and while the majority, if not all, were available in white for a cool color match effect with a white roof. The interior is also equally customizable which I'll highlight more in just a second, but in addition to various trim pieces, you can also opt for a wide variety of colors and two-toned leathers from black and red to beige, green, and even blue.
The Mini can be had with a wide variety of wheel options like I mentioned earlier in multiple sizes and can be either finished in silver or white. The Cooper S here features my favorite set of wheels for the Mini, the largest 17-inch s Light aluminum alloy wheels, finished in silver paint and wrapped in 20545 Pirelli run-flat performance tires. Brakes consist of 10.9-inch ventilated discs up front with 10.2-inch solid discs in the rear. With this setup, the Mini can stop from 60 miles an hour in a relatively short 117 feet. As far as the suspension, it's fully independent with McPherson struts in front and a multi-link rear with coil springs and beefed up anti-roll bars for the Cooper S. Overall length is 143.9 inches, riding on a 97.1 inch wheelbase, with a width of 66.5 inches and a height of 55.8 inches. Total curb weight, as you see here, is around 2,760 pounds. So we'll go ahead and pop the hood. And before 2007, all the hood latches were located on the right hand side. In order to open up the hood, the latch is located right underneath the driver's side headlight. Power comes from a 1.6 liter single overhead cam 16 valve supercharged and intercooled four cylinder for the Cooper S. It features an iron block with aluminum heads and four valves per cylinder with port fuel injection coupled to an Eaton double helix roots type supercharger. Compression ratio is 8.3 to 1 with a red line of 6750 RPM. With maximum boost pressure of 11.6 PSI, this power combination produces 168 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 162 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. This translates to 0-60 to 60 times of 6.6 .6 seconds with quarter mile times of 15.5 seconds at 93 miles an hour. Top speed is a drag limited 134 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, with a 13.2 gallon tank on required premium gas, Expect to see a miles per gallon rating between 24 city and 33 on the highway. The interior of the Mini is a great blend of modern yet traditional styling. Build quality was pretty good as standard, but could also be had even better in some of the upper spec models as you see here. Padded material covers the majority of the door panel as well as padded armrests. There's also color accent rings in the doors to give some neat contrast that can be had in a few different styles including this one that has the anthracite interior package. The speakers as well as the door handles are accented in bright silver, with all of your power windows and mirrors, locks, all located in the center console. Finished off with accent lighting in each door handle. S models receive upgraded seating compared to the base Coopers. They feature a lot more lateral grip up top and down below for a much more sporty feeling. They could also be either had in the base cloth, leatherette, or a variety of leather trims. They are fully manual with manual height adjustment for both seats in addition to manual lumbar. The headrests are adjustable up and down with side airbags and adjustable seat belts. And in my opinion, these seats are actually a lot more comfortable than some of the newer Cooper S seats. Aluminum sport pedals, also specific to the S, whereas you have a manual tilt telescoping steering wheel up top for more accommodating of different driver types. Padded material also wraps across the top of the dash and the unique speedometer cluster like I mentioned earlier. All nicely finished off with the anthracite headliner as well as the optional full panoramic glass roof. So let's go ahead and see as she sounds.
Now we're going to shut her up, take her for a drive. Beautifully tight panels. is one of the most fun cars you can buy for the money. I mean, sure, there's plenty of other competition out there that might make better sense as far as performance and overall technology and features that you get with most vehicles this day and age, but they don't really have quite the character that you would find in a Mini. But I mean, when you're driving it, it feels small, it feels real heavy. It feels like you're driving something just a little different. And I'm one of those kind of guys that I really like to be different. I like to stand out from the crowd. I like to take pride in what I own. I mean, I, I searched for this particular car for a few months um, just because I, after driving the newer ones, I just, I really wanted one of the older ones. I wanted the supercharged engine. You don't have any turbo lag or anything like that. It's just instant power. And I mean, you just, you just don't get tired of that supercharger wine. You really don't. It's, it, it just, it adds to the unique flavor that the R53 gives. As far as interior space for the driver and passenger, it's actually pretty good. I mean, obviously you know that you're driving a smaller car, but you don't feel claustrophobic at all. There's a lot of travel and adjustments to these front seats that you can extend it all the way back and you can be six feet, no problem, and drive this car comfortably. So my final verdict, the Mini is a lot of fun. It's fun to plant in the corners, it's fun to shift, it's fun to hear that sound, and it's fun to look at. I mean, it's just a cool car, in my opinion. It may not be for everyone's taste, but for those who really appreciate what it is, I mean, it's kind of like a, a niche car. It's got a little bit of a cult following. It's fun to get together with the clubs and go on little rallies and all that kind of stuff. And it's all just, it, it's very unique to Mini. The cars are very personalizable. There's a ton of aftermarket stuff out there for them. But when you go to buy one, make sure you get your service records. Make sure you're not buying it with too high, high of mileage without those service records. And I mean, you can buy yourself a fantastic little car. Now this Cooper S features the top line Harman Kardon premium audio system with an AM FM radio as well as single disc in dash CD player. This one's actually been retrofitted with the factory iPod integration kit. Now I highly recommend the Harman Kardon system when looking at one of these used minis. You'll definitely appreciate the extra audio quality that you get 
Especially in a vehicle this size, the speakers packed an absolute punch of fantastic low bass response and nicely balanced clarity with treble. I would honestly say that the Harman Kardon system in this is better than the Bose system in my Chevrolet Avalanche. It's also almost right on par with the 500 watt Alpine system in the Charger. Like I said, the dash is covered in soft touch material, just as the doors. The black gate pillars blend into an extremely soft black headliner part of the anthracite package. Because of the shape of the roof, there's actually two sunshades. One off to the side here, and of course, one up front, with a vanity mirror and lights. The mirror itself is auto dimming, while you have your reading lamps and ambient illumination at night up in front of here, and controls for your automatic sunroof. A little wind deflector pops up, and the glass extends back over the rear portion. You could still close this little sunshade if you want to. Now, I will say you can get blackout shades for these, since these sunshades don't block out the sun entirely on a hot day. It doesn't really bother me because, I mean, the vehicle's so small, you just put down a window and it airs out. But one thing I will like to make mention, I like this design a whole lot better than the designs that are used on the R56 and other newer minis. You'll notice that it's actually like a spring-loaded thing. It automatically goes back. And when you bring it out here, it clips in. Now, I don't know if they did this on the newer minis right offhand, but I had a Clubman, and every time you would put it up in here, it wouldn't lock in place. So when you're driving down the road and you hit bumps, it would automatically like slide back under the tension. And what's quite annoying as you can imagine, so I'm glad these lock in place. Even the back ones lock in place. Of course, your other illumination is up top there. You have grip handles all the way around with coat hooks in the back. I'm a big fan of the anthracite interior package as well. I think it gives it a fantastic sporty appearance, as well as add a little bit of dose of refinement, especially with the headliner. The accessory gauges in the middle, like we touched on earlier, as well as the chrome accented rings. As you come down the center stack, many of the trims, including this portion across the door, is like a satin gunmetal gray to match the, um, the high gloss portions. The standard AM FM radio with optional CD player, digital display, your simple functions change between the different radio modes, AM, FM, manual tuning, seek scan, different presets, as well as your audio adjustments. Different preset stations, and more. Now, electronic automatic climate control is actually an option. The standard system is just manual rotary dials, but they all have the same winged silhouette to kind of mimic the um, mini emblem. So you have your different zones across here, fan speed, temperature by just clicking the wheel, one touch automatic, front and rear defrost, as well as AC and recycling. And of course, the mini trademark toggle switches in the middle here, with your traction control, lock and unlock, front fog lamps, that's where the rear fog lamps would go if equipped, and your power mirrors on either side. You do have a padded storage tray down below there, lighter and or power outlet, two cup holders, as well as your power mirrors in the middle. The only option this vehicle doesn't have are heated seats, which would go on either side here. Storage tray, resetting your tire pressure monitoring system, pad, leather e-brake, as well as an extra cup holder for a rear passenger. Your manual lumbar is located via the rotary dials on either side of the inner part of the seat, as well as your recline. As far as the steering wheel, your radio controls are located on the left, whereas your cruise control on the right. Intermittent wipers, as well as controlling the rear wiper, and all of your lighting, turn signal, and change of the different modes for the driver information system located in the tachometer. Outside temperature, fuel, average speed, that's pretty much it. And in the right hand side portion you have your odometer, time, and at the time of making this video it only has 37,000 miles. Pretty good for an 05. Alrighty. Definitely a cool interior layout. And we'll go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. To gain access, all you have to do is just press this switch here, and the seat will automatically fold forward. There's also a storage net on both the driver and passenger side seat backs.
tufted leather with the gravity leather interior. Now, back when I was an undergrad in college, I had a buddy that had a Mini Cooper almost just like this one. But I remember there ever so fondly that whenever more than two people came with us, I was always the one that forgot to shout out shotgun, so I always got the back seat. So I'm pretty familiar with how a back seat of a Mini Cooper works and climbing in. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", somewhere around there. Climbing in really isn't that big of a deal, but it's leg room where you can kind of get into a pinch. I mean, somebody can sit up there where I have it sat right now, but probably not somebody over six feet. With that in mind, if you do have someone shorter sitting up front, the back seat is not as cramped as you would think. It's not big at all, but I can sit back here just fine for a little bit of a trip. I mean, like I said, there are storage pockets. The back seats have a little bit of cutouts in them, so you have a little bit more wiggle room for your legs and you could stick your legs up under the seats as there's not a lot of hardware so you don't have your knees jammed up into your chest or anything like that. As far as headroom, I probably have about an inch and a half actually and maybe about an inch, inch and a half depending on where my legs are in the back seat. As far as overall comfort, it's also not too bad. Now the standard leatherette seats are a little hard, they're a little less comfortable, but these leather seats with the extra padding that they have in them definitely makes it a little bit more refined feeling. As far as comfort on the headrest, you can also raise them up if needed. Although, if you don't have anybody sitting back here, I would just lower them just so you have better visibility. There are some armrests here, as well as storage, and silver speaker grills back here to match the ones in the front. You do have grip handles like I showed you earlier with coat hooks and your rear illumination. You can also fit a car seat back here. There's actually two anchors in either side so you can strap one down. So while I wouldn't recommend the back seat for people over six feet, those under six feet, it's more than livable, but really you need to experience it in person and check it out yourself, taking into consideration who you're going to be riding with to see whether you're really going to be comfortable or not. But getting out is also not too bad. You don't have a handle over there, so it's a little bit more difficult, but I would usually grab the handle up on the passenger side and just kind of hoist myself out. Open up the Mini's convenient hatch and you'll find a respectable 5.3 cubic feet of cargo space behind the seat. In addition to that, there's also some illumination off to the right hand side, a power outlet to the left, as well as your roadside assistance equipment in the bottom of the floor. Fold down the rear seats and it expands to 23.7 cubic feet, about the size of a Buick Roadmaster's trunk. Pulling up the seats can be rather hard, you gotta reach in far unless you get these little straps that I purchased on eBay, it's definitely well worth it. Not to mention there's also a cargo cover for a little bit of extra privacy. The passenger seat also features the same manual adjustments that you would find on the driver's seat. It does have a locking glove box, even though right now it's kind of full of stuff. It does have a good amount of space though, with some illumination, as well as two coasters if you wanted to set some cups down while you were sitting still. The Mini Cooper is just one of those classic themed cars that you just can't help but love for its quirkiness. With unique proportions, customizability, and good performance overall, they're destined to be a future collectible for any Mini enthusiast. Well everyone, I hope you've enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2005 Mini Cooper S. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.